You're such an asshole. Time for a clarity test request. Hey, Aaron, video request. Please do a clarity test about Carl Gustav Emil Mannerheim. This guy has been dead since I lived 1867-1951. And let's pull. Oh, good Lord, Wikipedia, do they want your money? Well, Wikipedia, you could have. Finland. Looks quite Asian, actually, though. Interesting. All right. Baron Carl Gustav Emil. Always oh, Baron, that's his title. Mannerheim, Swedish pronunciation was a Finnish military leader and statesman. Mannerheim served as the military leader of the Whites in the Finnish Civil War, Regent of Finland, Commander-in-Chief Finland, and is the 6th President of Finland from 1944 to 1946. Mannerheim made a career in the Imperial Russian Army, rising to the rank of Lieutenant General. He also had a prominent place in the ceremonies of Tsar Nicholas II's coronation and later had Several private meetings with the Russian Tsar. After the Bolshevik Revolution, Finland declared its independence but was soon embroiled in a civil war between the pro-Bolshevik Reds and the Whites, who were the troops of the Senate of Finland. Mannerheim was appointed the military chief of the Whites 20 years later when Finland was twice at war with the Soviet Union and from November 1939 until September 1944. Mannerheim successfully led the defense. Oh, this was the guy in charge of that. Oh, okay. All right, this was this was going back to World War II. I remember this. You were thinking like, how did how did Finland fight off the Soviet Union? And this is the guy. Mannerheim successfully led the defense of Finland as commander in chief of the country's armed forces in 1944. When the prospect of Germany's defeat in World War II became clear, Mannerheim was elected president of Finland and oversaw peace negotiations with the Soviet Union and the United Kingdom. Finland was never at war with the United States. He resigned the presidency in 1946 and died in 1951. So this guy gave it up. <clears throat> in a Finnish survey, 53 years after his death, Mannerheim was voted the greatest Finn of all time, given the broad recognition in Finland and elsewhere of his unparalleled role in establishing and later preserving Finland's independence from Russia. Mannerheim has long been referred to as the father of modern Finland and the Finnish capital Helsinki's Mannerheim Museum memorializing the leader's life and times has been called the closest thing there is to Finnish National Shrine. All right, so let's go and see if he came for money. Descends from a German businessman, Heinrich Mannerheim, who emigrated to the Swedish Empire. His son changed his name. Wait, wait, the Mannerheim family descends from a German businessman, Heinrich. Oh, this goes back to the 1600s. That's how far back we're going. Let's get, let's get to his dad. Mannerheim's great-grandfather, Count Karl, okay, served as prime minister. Mannerheim's grandfather, Count, was an ophthalmologist and served as the president. Mannerheim's father, Karl Count Mannerheim, was a playwright who held liberal and radical political ideas, but he was also an industrialist whose success varied. Mannerheim's mother was a daughter of a wealthy industrialist. So, okay, he gets a point because he came from money. Education. This is going to be hard because way back then, it really didn't matter what you went to school for. Unless you went and studied Marxism. You went to cadet school. Okay, cadet corps, you're going to stay in the military. Uh, so he, he can't get a point for his education. Mannerheim heartily disliked the school and the narrow social circles in Hamina. He rebelled by going on leave without permission in 1886, for which he was expelled in the Primal Lyceum, go to school, just kind of went to Calvary School. Strengthen his decision to choose a career in the military. All right, so it looks like he was in the military the entire time. Does he have real world working experience? Yes, because the military is one of the few public sector jobs that is considered real world working experience. Uh, transferred to the Chevalier Guard Regiment in St. Petersburg. There's more accountants and married into wealthy stuff. Uh, served in the guard. Service in the Russian army. So we're up into the 1910s. Regent of Finland and England service in the independent. Da, 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 born commander in chief. Finland's almost non-existent army. So then also he was in the he was in the military. This is a he's a military career military man. Yeah. 
So he's been military the entire time. <clears throat> um, then what did he do? He, he basically served, it would be like Patton or, or um, Patton had become president, but more akin to Eisenhower, I would say. And he gave up the presidency and then died shortly thereafter. Uh, perfect score, given that you do not control whether you're born into wealth or not. So uh, Mannerheim gets a point of one. Would I like to talk to this gentleman? Hell yes, I'd like to talk to this gentleman. And I would not talk to him, I would just shut up and listen. Um, but yeah, this is that's a, that's a really interesting fellow there, a true man. Uh, and the fact, even though he came from wealth, he did not let that obviously influence him. And he must have been a brilliant tactician. That right there, how Finland defeated the Soviets, that would... I, I listened to a little bit of a podcast, and I think it was... History Extra podcast? Out by the BBC, but it didn't delve into necessarily the strategy. It was a very superficial analysis of it. So, But that's it. All right, you guys got questions? AssholeConsulting.com. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.